Let's analyze an alternative way to help a domestic industry that's competing with cheap imports. In this instance, we're going to be looking at a production subsidy. What I mean by that is that the government will pay a set amount for every unit of domestic production. So we're going to do this in an import competing market. In a later video, we'll do it for an industry that is exporting and trying to sell in the, in the world market. Do this with perfect competition and a small country, at least to, to start with. So we start out with a, a standard supply and demand curve where we've got the domestic supply and domestic demand. And we have a constant world price, say $100, which can be purchased from foreign uh, producers as much as you, as much as this country could possibly want. So it's a small country uh, circumstance. So as we are familiar with, we've got Q2 that is consumed domestically, Q1 is produced domestically, and the the question now is how does a this per unit subsidy change this graph? And most importantly. You should think about it as reducing the cost to the domestic producer. Every time you make something, the government sends you a check that, that covers part of the cost of production. So in essence, what we're doing is shifting the supply curve down. Now, I like to think about it shifting down rather than out, as is often the case, because that, that really focuses on the changing domestic production costs. Now the question is, what happens to domestic prices? Now this is really one of the critical aspects here. So again, it's a small country. They, there is a, as much of this product coming in from abroad as, as the country would, could conceivably buy. Now in a standard domestic context, if you have a production subsidy that increases the supply by reduction of, of the effective costs, and the, and the price in the market will fall. That can't happen with a small country importing this product because if the domestic price were to fall by even a penny, foreigners will be unwilling to supply this. So the domestic price does not fall from the world price. The intervention wouldn't increase the, the price either because if the price were to rise by just a, a penny, then foreigners would flood into the market. The bottom line is that the domestic prices remain unchanged. And this really is a critical aspect of this, and, it, and you should really stop and think about this for a while if, if that is not clear. The foreign price pegs the domestic price, because there's no restrictions on, on foreigners bringing the product in. So it doesn't uh, uh, increase the price, as would a tariff or a quota. So the increase in the, or the decrease in the, of the effective production cost as perceived by the domestic producer increases the quantity produced to Q3. That is to say, where the firm's perceived marginal cost, their direct cost, reflective of the subsidy, Okay, that's this red, red line, will cause essentially the marginal cost to drop as perceived by the, by the domestic firm. Q3 is now the quantity that is produced. Now, when we start to look at the effects on the different groups, so in comparison with the tariffs or the quotas, consumers, no change. There's no effect on the domestic price. Consumers are, are, are real, quite indifferent. Now what happens to producers? Well, let's take a look at the following. Now the, the, the domestic price doesn't change. But what the revenue that firms, domestic firms get does change. So Q3 
quantity will end up uh, giving the domestic producers this much from a market transaction. That is to say, the price times the quantity is the revenue that they get from interactions with consumers. And that subsidy rate multiplied times the quantity means that there is an additional source of revenue. That blue box from the domestic government. Essentially a transfer from domestic taxpayers through the domestic government to the producers. So the revenue that the, dom that the domestic firms get is that box plus that box. Two sources from the consumers and also from the government. Now, what is it, uh, what, what um, is the, uh, uh, the cost of producing that amount? Okay, that is still the area under the supply curve. That's how much it costs the domestic producers to make this. Now, some of this is going to be covered by the, uh, by the, by the subsidy transfer, but the cost of making this product is the area under the supply curve. So, so you've got this much revenue, you've got this much in the way of, of costs, and so what you're left with is an increase in producer surplus equal to area A. So that reflects the fact that, that the domestic producers benefit from the intervention by the government. Okay. So, no consumer effects. We've got the uh, producer surplus uh, gain. Now, the government ends up losing a and B. Taxpayers, if you will. Um, and we're going to interpret B in just a second, but I want to uh, focus for a moment on foreign producers. How are they affected? Well, it's a small country, so you're not going to have any uh, long-term effects, even short-term effects, because the foreigners will simply sell this product someplace else. But you do have a reduction in the amount of imports in this market as a consequence of the subsidy. Initially, you were uh, importing Q2 to Q1. The increase in the domestic production to Q3 means that there are fewer imports. So you see a, a, um, an increase in the amount of domestic production activity without an increase in price, which really is a critical aspect of this. Now, if you think for just a second, if this were a large country, that reduction in the amount of imports will have an effect on world prices. So you can get the same increase in domestic production that you might with a tariff without the increase in domestic prices and harm to domestic cons uh, consumers. Okay, so let's do one final thing, which is to interpret the net effect B, which is the deadweight loss. And that was the difference between what uh, producers got in terms of producer surplus and the, and the government, uh, the government uh, costs. So as with the tariff, what it would have cost to get this much from foreigners is the world price multiplied times the quantity. So that area C is the cost uh, that you'd have to pay to foreigners to get Q1 to Q3. What it cost domestic producers to make it, okay, forget about the subsidy, what it truly costs to make it is the area under the supply curve. So B is a dead weight loss, a lost opportunity to import cheaper foreign products. So let me, let me summarize this. A domestic production subsidy can get 
an increase in domestic production, just as a tariff would, just as a, a quota could, but at a lower cost. You can increase the domestic production and the domestic employment, presumably, without increasing the costs to domestic consumers in this market, because the, the price doesn't change. Now, let's be clear about this. Domestic production subsidies can be controversial. One aspect of it is that the government is clearly targeting and helping a particular industry. They're sending a check to a particular industry. And that, that can raise political costs to a, a domestic government, because you're you're not saying, well, we're taxing foreigners as with a tariff, and the foreigners are, are pay, bearing the brunt of it, even though we know that the, the, the cost of the tariff gets passed on to, uh, to the domestic uh, consumers entirely with a small country. Instead, the government is being, it, it, it's very clear that the government is financially supporting a domestic industry, and that can be controversial, because it's a transfer, clearly, from taxpayers to that domestic uh, uh, domestic companies. Now, as an economist, I would say a tariff does the same thing. It transfers money from a domestic consumer to the domestic industry. So, you know, both have that transfer. But with a, a, a population that is not sophisticated about the, the, the economic effect, it's easy to say that the, the, the production subsidy is a direct help while a tariff is imposing a tax on foreigners, even though that's economically not very uh, not very compelling. The other aspect that, about this that I would uh, note is that the uh, domestic production subsidies are uh, cost the government money. You know, tariffs raise money to the government. Again, it's a transfer from consumers to the to the government, but from a uh, from a strictly government budgetary standpoint, there are some downsides to the production subsidy because it drains, takes funds out of the government budget, and sends it to a domestic industry. So, as a from a, from a strictly domestic government standpoint, the tariff raises money, and the production subsidy costs money. But as economists, we try to think uh, more broadly uh, than just the narrow budgetary consequences for the uh, for the government. Instead, to look at the overall impact on the, the economy as a whole.